Hi, this is Alex from APC Dynamics, and in this video, we're going to talk about recurring journals. Recurring journals are basically entries where you need to make periodically, either by month, twice a week, whatever. So example of these entries are, for example, rent, uh, where you have to pay every month, payroll, where you pay maybe every two weeks, and any kind of accruals, um, your inventory accruals, AP accruals, where you need to make the entry and reverse it out for the following period. So let's get started. To set up recurring journal, we need to use the recurring general journal. So let's bring up the recurring general journal. So the first recurring journal we're gonna create is for rent. Now, you wanna create different batches for different purposes. You can also choose to put everything in the same batch and post it that way. It de really depends on your print preference. If you do want to create different batches, you wanna make sure you define the posting number series. That way, when these recurring journal post, the document number would correctly identify what the purpose is. So let's set up uh, rent first. Typically for rent, you're gonna be paying the same amount every month. So let's say your rent is due on the 10th of every month. The recurring method you need to define would be fixed and the recurring frequency would be current month plus 10 days. Now the recurring frequency is uh, based on a date formula and I'll attach a link to how to define the link formula in the video comments. For this purpose, current month is we're adding the current month plus 10 days. So when I post this entry, it's gonna add the current month plus 10 days. So it's always gonna be the 10th of the month. The document type, you could leave blank. For document number, you could just fill in as one. After posting this recurring journal, we're gonna the system will automatically use the document number as on the number series that we set up for this batch. The account type would be the GL account that I want to take money out of. So in this case, I'm going to choose my bank account and choose my the bank account that you want to pay. And let's say our rent is $3,000 a month. You could also def uh, define a dimension code and expiration date if you want to. And for this case, I am going to leave it blank. Click on the allocated amount. And here we could define the expense account to allocate the freight. So if there are multiple departments that you want to charge as expense to, you could define the department code here. Otherwise you could leave it blank and put the allocation percentage to 100%. If you say you want to allocate between the admin department and the sales department, we could just define 50% and specify the same GL account and define our sales department. And that will allocate the expense between admin and sales, 50-50. When I close this, I can click on post and it will automatically post the recurring journal. And you'll notice that the posting date will automatically change to the 10th for the following month. If I try to post this again, it will give me an error because my work date has not reached February 10th yet. Now let's talk about creating a recurring journal for entries where the amount is going to change every time you post. So let's go back to the recurring journal. I want to make sure I choose my payroll batch and make sure I have a number series set up for it. My recurring method, instead of having it be fixed, I'm going to choose variable and the recurring frequencies. Typically payroll is paid every two weeks. So I'm gonna define 2W there. Document number, you could leave it as one. And the account type is the bank account that you wanna pay your payroll from. Okay, so the amount would be the amount that's going to be withdrawn from your bank for payroll. So let's say this is 5,000. And the allocated amount, when you drill down, you need to define the your payroll GL accounts. In this case, I'm just gonna keep it simple. We have our payroll taxes, my regular wages, and my hourly wages. If you know the allocation percentage between your payroll and your payroll taxes, you could enter the allocation percentages, but th typically this is gonna be based on your payroll report. So I'm gonna say a thousand here, no, 2000 and 2000, and then click on close. Now, once my amount balances, I can go ahead and post. And again, this will automatically add two weeks to my journal every time I post. So the next period when I come in, so let's say if payroll is 4,500, you would do the same thing. 
The last journal we're going to talk about is the reversing recurring journal. You would typically use a reversing recurring journal when you want to make accrual entries. In other words, you want to post the entry on, you want to make an accrual entry at the end of the month and you want to reverse it on the following month. So on the recurring journal, define my recurring method. So in this case, uh, you could use fix, but typically when you're making an accrual, the amount's gonna be different every time. So we're just gonna define that as reversing variable. And the recurring frequency is gonna occur at the end of every month. So the formula you're gonna use is one month plus current month. So it's gonna add one month and it's gonna add whatever the remaining of remainder of the month is. Don't worry if it's February. Okay, the system is smart enough to know that when I say one month, it's not going to cross over to uh, March if it's if we're in January. Posting date would be the date uh, that has to be the end of the month. Unfortunately, Business Central does not allow you to define when the reverse, reversing entry is gonna take place. It's always gonna occur the following day. I've defined my GL account that I'm gonna accrue and I've allocated the amount that I'm gonna accrue. So I'm gonna type in 100. 200 in this case and I'm just gonna post all right so you see that the date automatically changes to the next period now let's take a look at the entry that this created if I look at my general ledger entry you'll see that it created these four entries for us the original entry was for the accrual okay it, it reversed it out on the following day with the same amount so and that's it so in this video we'll covered the recurrent journals with a fixed Recurring, recurring journal when this variable and any kind of reversing variable when we need to do some accrual entries. Obviously, there are more options in the recurring journal, but these are the three that you're typically going to use in Business Central. If you have any questions or issues, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Talk to you soon.